the Pali word samadhi is usually translated as concentration. I know at least one teacher who objects to that translation on the grounds that when we usually think about being concentrated on something, there's a lot of tension. The spot where we're staying concentrated is a concentrated spot of tension. And she points out that's not the quality we're trying to develop at all. There are other ways, though, of thinking of concentration. That you're not focused on a spot outside your center of who you think you are, but the center is supposed to be right in where you think you are. It's a different kind of concentration. Just think of it being centered. And the quality that the Buddha recommends is eventually one where your awareness fills the whole body. In which every part of the body has almost equal importance. It's kind of like the concentration you use when you're playing a video game and the enemy could appear at any point in the screen. So your awareness has to be spread out and give equal importance to everything, so that as soon as the enemy appears, you can detect him and zap him. Another comparison is the way trackers go through the forest. They're looking for signs that animals have been there. And they can't focus only on the ground. They have to focus also on the leaves of, of the trees, the branches that might be broken. The signs of animals having passed by can be anywhere, so they have to have what they call scattershot concentration. In other words, your concentration is spread out, and you have to center your awareness inside. So there's no one spot in your outside frame of vision that's getting more attention than others. You're ready to pick up wherever the signs are. So one way of developing this kind of concentration is to think of your awareness starting with your hands and your feet and then moving inward. Relax your hands, relax the wrists, go up the arms, the shoulders. Then start with your feet and come up from the bottom, through the legs, the pelvis, up the back. Bring your awareness into the area around the heart or into the area right where your field of vision seems to be centered and see if you can maintain a sense of being centered there, but at the same time having the full range of where you've been, all connected together. And that's the kind of concentration the Buddha is talking about, where you're one with the object. It's not like you're sitting in one spot of the body watching the breath and another spot of the body. You're sitting in the middle of the breath. The breath is bathing you on all sides. And think of it as it comes in as being totally unobstructed. It can come in, go out with a sense of ease. You're centered, but there's a sense of ease. You're not using tension to hold you there, yourself there. It's, there is a little bit of tension, but not much. Because after all, we're trying to create a state of mind that we can maintain for long periods of time. And if there's a lot of tension in maintaining it, it's not going to last. Your strength will wear out, you start getting tired of it, and instead of being nourishing and refreshing, the concentration becomes tiresome. But you can think of all the scattered tentacles of your awareness coming back into the center and leaving everything on their periphery very relaxed. It creates a kind of stability that's easy to maintain. Now, it may not be easy to get used to it in the beginning, especially if you're the kind of person who likes to be focused just on one point. But this is much more longer lasting once you master it. So it's a talent that's worth working on. 
that changes your relationship to how you relate to the body, how you relate to events in the mind. Because this broader concentration is very hard, hard to knock over. If your concentration is one-pointed, it's very easy to, to lose it, because you move the point and the concentration is gone. But with this, you've got a larger frame of reference, and things can come and go in the midst of that frame of reference, and you can see them, but they don't shake the frame. The frame is still there. It's like that image I sometimes use of being a screen on a window. Sounds go through the screen, wind goes through the screen, but the screen doesn't get moved. It's open. It's open to things outside, but at the same time unaffected by them. The same observation applies to your thoughts. Thoughts can come floating through the mind, but you don't latch on to them. You don't get interested in them. You're centered right here. You know they're there, but you don't really pay attention to them. Your center stays maintained right here. Everything gravitates into the center. And that's the quality of concentration we're looking for. Because it's only in that kind of concentration you can spread the sense of ease and well-being to the body. If there's feeling of rapture, that can spread through the body because you've opened up all the channels as you've moved into the center. That gives a feeling of being connected. The breath energy feels that it's in harmony throughout the body. And this is an ideal state of mind to observe what's going on in the mind. Because thoughts can arise and pass away, and you see them arising and passing away, but you're not shaken by them, and you're not arising and passing away along with them. They have their ups and downs, but you're, you stay still, here in the middle. And so the processes of thoughts as they arise and pass away become a lot clearer. You can see the machinations of the mind as it creates a thought. And as in the video game, you can zap them wherever they appear. Because it's not the thoughts don't have a place in the body. They, to stay and to be the kind of thought that you can stick with for a while, there has to be a pattern of tension someplace in the body associated with them. That's the marker that keeps them there. Without that marker, they can't stay. It's because of those little markers of tension that work that involves a lot of thinking and a lot of planning. It's really tiresome. You can sit at your desk and not really do anything physically, but you come away very tired because of all the tension that's been playing around in the body. But when you get the mind centered like this, you can see the little pattern of tension as it comes together with the thought, and you can zap the pattern of tension, and the thought will dissolve. And the more qu quickly you can do that, the more you see the early stages of how a mind constructs a thought. And you're less likely to be taken in by those processes. You can stop them when you say they're not going anywhere useful. If it turns out the thought is something you have to think about, okay, you can think about it, but you have more control over where it's going. Because you're staying with this larger framework, you're not getting into the framework of the thought. And if you lose the center, well, go back to the periphery again, start with the hands, start with the feet, and move back into the center again. Think of yourself backing in the body, if that's a helpful perception. Anything to give the sense that you're here sitting surrounded by the breath, by the body. Then your center is firm. Not firm through tension, firm through, simply through the fact that it's right in the middle, where everything gravitates on its own. That's the kind of center you can maintain for long periods of time. 